You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday the 11th of November 2013. Two Bristol men face sexual exploitation charges. British troops deployed to save Kenyan elephants. Aviz Khan, trial cop accused of helping out race-hate preacher. Moroccan attacked nine women within a few hours in Bern, Switzerland. Italy, Mecca Disco changes its name amid Muslim protests. Italy, charges pressed against Senator for racist orangutan remarks. Libyan PM warns of foreign intervention if chaos persists. Russian artist nails his genitals to Moscow's Red Square. Grand Canyon to be flooded with man-made flow. Thought for the day, poppycock, no help for this hero. And finally, why do Muslim terrorists want to die? UK News. Two Bristol men face sexual exploitation charges. Two men have been charged with offences including rape relating to the sexual exploitation of children in Bristol. Mohammed Dahir, 21, faces a total of three charges. Yusuf Abdizarak, 19, faces one charge. Both men appeared at Bristol's Magistrates Court and were remanded in custody until the 28th of November when they will appear at Bristol Crown Court. They are the 7th and 8th men to be charged as part of Operation Brook, Avon and Somerset Police said. Mr Dahir of Eastern Bristol has been charged with one count of rape of a girl aged between 13 and 15, one count of causing inciting a child aged 13 to 17 to prostitution and one count of aiding and abetting rape of a girl under 13. Mr Abdizarak of Nowell, Bristol has been charged with one count of rape of a girl aged between 13 and 15. Operation Brook is Avon and Somerset's police ongoing investigating into the sexual exploitation of children in Bristol. British troops deployed to save Kenyan elephants. Mia de Graaf writing for the Daily Mail, British troops have been deployed to save Kenya's elephants from being slaughtered by terrorists for their valuable tusks. Al-Shabaab is thought to earn £400,000 a year selling ivory in Somalia. 60 wardens and 38,000 elephants have been killed in the past year. 25 British soldiers will spend coming weeks teaching rangers to patrol better. Earlier this year, Prince William urged leaders to take on illegal poachers to determine the fate of some of the world's most captivating species. He said failure to do so would be a catastrophe. Brigadier Duncan Francis, the UK's defence attaché in Nairobi, said, This is an excellent example of the British Army taking positive action on an issue close to many people's hearts. The 25 soldiers will be making an immense contribution to securing the future of some of the world's most endangered species. World at Eight says, good on them, at least they're protecting animals that deserve it. Aviz Khan, trial cop accused of helping out race hate preacher. A police officer accused of leaking plans to arrest hate preacher Anjem Chowdhury to his wife while she worked for Respect MP George Galloway will stand trial next year. Detective Inspector Mohammed Aviz Khan, 46, allegedly passed confidential information to Aisha Ali Khan while he was in charge of the Muslim contact unit in the Met's counter-terrorism unit. Ali Khan, 33, who served as Mr Galloway's parliamentary secretary, is said to have asked her husband to use his position to investigate the source of a string of emails and obtain personal details of those believed to be responsible. In addition to the allegations concerning Chowdhury, Khan also faces further charges of obtaining CCTV from South Yorkshire Police without valid reason. World at eight. This is the danger of employing foreigners in English political circles. It doesn't bode well at all. European news. Moroccan attacks nine women within a few hours in Bern, Switzerland. An asylum applicant appeared before the court for Bern, charged with attacking nine women and forcing some of them to perform sexual acts in May 2012. He faces nine and a half years in prison. A Moroccan, 22, armed with a pair of scissors, broke into the apartment of a Bern woman on the morning of May 2012. He forced her to perform oral sex in front of her minor daughter. By chance, he was arrested some time later by the police. It turned out that this attack was not the only one committed by the applicant for asylum. In the space of a few hours, he had attacked eight women. 
When questioned, the Moroccan remembers only one assault. I was drunk, he stated. However, his blood alcohol level was only 0.58% during his arrest. The prosecutor requested nine and a half years in prison. The verdict was expected earlier today. World at eight. Clearly a wonderful example of an illegal migrant for asylum. Deport him immediately back home. Prison in Switzerland sounds like a holiday camp. Italy. Mecca Disco changes name amidst Muslim protests. Owners rebrand to Oriental Disco Club after Mayor pressured. Muslim community in the southern Italian city of Isernia had pressured owners of the Mecca nightclub to rename itself out of religious respect. Since critics took their complaints to the city council and the mayor, the club has changed its name to Oriental Disco Club. The club owners said that they never meant to offend anyone. World well, date, change it back. I lived in Medina Villas in Ho for years back in the days when we weren't so kind to Islam. There used to be the Mecca ballrooms as well. I wouldn't have thought the Italians so weak. Does the Muslim community go to this nightclub to be offended? Italy charges pressed against Senator for racist orangutan remarks. A prosecutor late Wednesday asked for an immediate trial for the anti-immigrant Northern League senator who compared Italy's first black minister to an orangutan in July. The remarks insulted Italy's Congo-born integration minister Cecily Kayenji. The prosecutor's office in the northern Italy town of Bergamo is charging Senator Roberto Calderoli with defamation aggravated by racial discrimination. The senior member of the Northern League told fellow party members at a political rally in July, Whenever I see Minister Kayenji, I cannot but help think of an orangutan. Calderoli's comments sparked calls for his resignation and triggered a probe in Pergamo, the capital of the province in which the political fest was held. When asked to comment on the launch of the probe, Kayenji said it is a duty. World Date states, There are many very good-looking people of colour, but again there are plenty who do service to monkeys. I'm sorry, but it's true. Kenneth Kayonda looked just like he'd come down from the trees. People who are black are right to object to being compared to our simian friends, but also they seem not to like the fact they are black. People of other colours, even us whites, don't object to being called that colour, and yet blacks really hate it. What is the matter with them? What happened to proud and black? World News. Libyan PM warns of foreign intervention if chaos persists. Libyan Prime Minister Ali Zidane has warned that foreign intervention might take place should chaos persist in Libya. The international community can no longer tolerate that a Mediterranean state is a source of violence and terrorism, he said. Mentioning Iraq as an example, the Prime Minister said that foreign forces might intervene, pointing out that Libya is still subject to a UN Security Council resolution that allows the international community to resort to force in order to protect civilians. Russian artist nails his genitals to Moscow's Red Square. A Russian performance artist nailed his genitals to the ground outside Moscow's Red Square in protest over Russia's police state as the country marked National Police Day. A video shows naked Peter Pavlinsky sitting on Russia's most famous square just outside the Kremlin on Sunday afternoon after nailing himself to the ground. Police first took him to the hospital and then into their custody. Interfax news agency said that a court dismissed charges of petty hooliganism and released him Monday. Pavlensky, who has been long known for his self-mutilating stunts, told Doz Television that he wanted to warn that we are on the threshold of becoming a police state. In the summer of 2012, Pavlensky sewed his mouth closed to protest the imprisonment of three members of Pussy Riot Band. World at eight. Every country has its idiots, doesn't it? Talk about being glued, screwed and tattooed. Grand Canyon to be flooded with man-made flow. A man-made flood is expected to tear through the Grand Canyon as part of attempts to restore its ecosystem. Officials will pump enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool into the Colorado River every other second, according to the Arizona Daily Sun. They hope to spread sediment throughout the canyon, creating sandbars and beaches for campers and protection for archaeological sites. Much of the sediment once deposited throughout the Grand Canyon is trapped behind a dam near the arizona Utah border. Officials hope to recreate the high flow that would have occurred that would have naturally occurred before the dam was built fifty years ago. The sediment rich water is essential to the canyon's wildlife habitat. Thought for the day Poppycock, no help for this hero.
And of course, I am talking about the Marine who is being hoisted on the platform of political correctness for apparently shooting a Taliban hostage. Now, I know I'm over the hill, certainly in regard to anything to do with our armed forces. And apart from being married to two men who did their national service and my present husband, who is ex-US Air Force, my knowledge of fighting men is somewhat limited. But although this crime took place in the war zone, I never thought the Taliban or any other partisan terrorist groups were considered covered by the Geneva Convention on Hostages or Prisoners of War. I believed that being thought of as a terrorist group, it was open season for our boys to do what they are paid to do, fight and kill the enemy. Only in Western society would this killing be even considered for a court-martial or even the arrest of these three Marines, two of which have been exonerated and now free to return to their bases. How did this sorry excuse of a court case ever come to light? No one is going to tell me that there haven't been thousands of cases similar to this through the ages and thousands much, much worse. You would really think that if you were an alien just catching up on news from Earth that the Nazis and the British Army have been the only killers that have existed. And of course we have to add the Americans in Vietnam for effect as well because we come under the banner of white and nasty people who kill the poor natives for no reason ever. We even have a division in the British hierarchy over this case. Lord Guthrie has told the Guardian this Marine must be punished severely. Defence Secretary Philip Hammond has rejected calls for clemency, while Major General Julian Thompson has called for leniency. And of course, I agree with the Major General. In fact, I would go further and ask how come this case came to court martial status. I've heard of us Brits shooting ourselves in the foot at every titch and turn, but in all honesty, who amongst us would not have shot this terrorist? Although videoing it was not the right thing to do and I'm sure and I'm surprised it didn't end up on YouTube. But it probably has. Our remnants of an army have been over in Afghanistan for the last few years. Underpaid, undervalued, underarmed and under orders not to kill terrorists. However many legs are blown off or fellow personnel are killed and maimed but keep on giving sweets to the children who could well be carrying bombs or saving wounded jihadist Muslims who could and would turn round and put a round of bullets into your stomach without thinking. No one wins in Afghanistan because no Westerner thinks like they do, and I'm including the terrorists bust in from Leeds or Manchester as well. Born in Britain does not a Brit make, as we all know, to our cost. I've always had a lot of sympathy for our armed forces, especially the army. Flying planes is lovely, going to sea is good, but tramping around a sodding desert with a few rounds of ammunition in the heat and not being able to wage war on a proper level must be terrible in the extreme, especially when the enemy appears to all look alike and dress alike. How do you know which is which? Now, I've never been one of those people who think people of other races all look alike. It is a music hall joke in reality. But to the Chinese, we all look alike, but they don't all look alike to me. Well, not in all cases. And the Africans are easily put into their own tribes with different bone structures, as are Indians and Arabs. But in all honesty, in a country where the national dress for men is a skirt over baggy trousers and a funny hat, plus a beard and more facial hair than a gorilla, how do you tell one from the other? By the time you've noticed the semi-hidden Kalishnikov, it's all too late. The women go around in virtual tents with peepholes and only Allah knows how many guns and bombs have been smuggled around in that lot and those that don't get their children to do it. This war in that land is a family and civilian war. It is not a meeting of two armies from two sides fighting to the death on a field. It is guerrilla warfare at its worst and in my mind it's okay to shoot partisans. Remember one man's guerrilla fighter is another man's freedom fighter. But if you are in the army, you are an army personnel and fair game to terrorists. Thus, you have to fight fire with fire or be killed. And we have lost too many good people on this particular altar to keep repeating it. So taking into account, firstly, our army should not be there. Secondly, they should have adopted the scorched earth policy and not the hearts and minds blather and done it quickly. Thirdly, they are undermanned and their equipment is not adequate. And last but not least, we are providing training and target practice for the Islamic jihadists in the form of our young men who are given orders to march alongside roads which have been heavily covered in IEDs. Why? Use tanks, not men, to clear roads. We in this country have reached a peculiar stage of our relationship with the army, our army. You might say we have become Islamized, or certainly more critical of our men than the terrorists, which is in itself a national disgrace. 
but seems to happen at various stages of this country's history and indeed the Western world. We put up with our boys coming home from duty and we label them immediately. They are either traumatised because of what they've been through or they are heroes. Now to me, a live yellow rat who cannot even aim a gun, anyone deserves a medal who puts on a uniform and has to obey orders. But what we fail to realise in the world today is that these brave men are doing a job. And to do that job well entails killing, and not all that killing will be attractive or in a kill or be killed situation. That is a fact. That is life. PTSD has occurred throughout history with certain soldiers and it always will. But to automatically think that a soldier kills a terrorist because he's been affected by war is a merging of the legal system and the army. Marine A was doing his job, and a good job it was. He was making sure that a terrorist did not get up again and kill him or his friends, and he did it well. If, and only if, the terrorist was really unarmed, what then was he doing there in the first place? Dead men tell no lies, and also taking prisoners in those circumstances is not advisable. Just look at what the army doesn't tell us. What happens to our boys when the Taliban terrorists get hold of them? Do you think they hold a court-martial for the guys who chop off their heads for fun? No. In fact, they probably have a shot of Arak and read the Koran whilst dancing around their hovels. We in the West are in direct opposition to the East. They celebrate their fighting men, pay them well, and are accorded respect in their country. Here we are always dividing our sentiments between apologising for them or making them heroes, when in fact many are, but most are not. Most are doing a good job under bad circumstances. Hell, we revere the old soldiers more than our current ones, who we leave destitute and homeless given half a chance. We reduce our standing armies, move them around, give them no respect in public, except the hypocritical Poppy Day, which hypes up the World War I, which has to boast the most inglorious leadership that ever was, and then do help for heroes or return our troops. To what? A country which doesn't support them, and a media which condemns them for doing, in essence, what they had been paid, poorly, to do. I like the thought of a country under army rule, preferably our army. You will always get the nutters and the oddballs, but this Marine A was neither and doesn't deserve the verdict of guilty as he shot a terrorist and to my knowledge the Taliban is not a voted in governmental body or army. It is a partisan movement and that is all. Already the media have almost gone into slavery mode here and will keep apologising and I quote. The verdict is a huge blow for the British services and historically significant. It is the first time a British serviceman or woman has been found guilty of murder during an overseas operation in modern times. The Royal Marines called it a truly shocking and appalling aberration. I'm glad they said, I'm so glad they said modern times, so we can ignore the murders carried out by the officers in the First World War of shell-shocked youngsters too frightened to go over the top. The blankets covered in smallpox given to the American Indians by British troops because they chose to fight with the French. And more recently, numerous episodes in Northern Ireland where we were fighting terrorism nearer home. I'm sure we were less than glorious in the Second World War all the time, but at least we were fighting a standing army, not civilian terrorists, where the rules of war are all upended. It is kill or be killed, and you're a long time dead if you choose wrongly. I would have thought the sight of Marines A, B and C's friends' limbs swinging on high would do something for any man, let alone a trained soldier, under duress in a combat zone. I would have done the whole locale in myself, civilians and all, because you can bet they helped the Taliban, and in doing so put our boys' lives in more danger. Perhaps it's just as well I never went into the army. I do have trouble with authority, especially if I don't think it is that authoritative. So our British history shows some very nasty things by our serving men in the past, and to a greater extent, they might have been deserved. But I wonder if the punishment meted out to poor Marine A will be matched by the sentences passed on the two Muslims who butchered Lee Rigby in his own country, in full view of people who could have stopped it, but were so busy using their mobile phones. I doubt these two miserable black bastards, full of show and swagger and the love of their so-called prophet, will serve anything approaching life. Not in this country, my friends. It is a load of poppycock. And finally, how dumb is dumb? This is absolutely the best description of the word I ever heard. We are not talking of the disgustingly rich Saudis, Kuwaitis or Qataris, of course, but the average Muslim living in a Muslim country, not the Muslims living over here.
Everyone seems to be wondering why Muslim terrorists are so quick to commit suicide. Let's have a look at the evidence. They have no Christmas, no television, no nudity, no football, no pork chops, no hot dogs, no burgers, no beer, no bacon, rags for clothes, towels for hats, constant wailing from some idiot in a tower, more than one wife, more than one mother-in-law. You can't shave. Your wife can't shave. You can't wash off the smell of donkey. You cook over burning camel dung. Your wife is picked by someone else for you. And your wife smells worse than your donkey. Then they tell you that when you die, it all gets better. So, OK, Sherlock, no wonder they want to commit suicide. It's not like it could get very much worse. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>